Beelzebub intended to say more. Just keep the breath moving through your body. But just then, everything was suddenly lit up with a pale blue something. And see it while you continue to breathe. From that moment, the falling of the ship Karnak began to diminish perceptibly its speed. All this meant that one of the great cosmic Egolianoptes was about to come alongside the spaceship Karnak. And indeed, through the transparent outer parts of the ship, meaning the windows, it soon became visible, which lit up not the whole, the whole of the interior of the ship Karnak, but also all the space of the universe surrounding this great cosmic ego Leonopti, as far as the ordinary vision of beings could reach. Of these great ego Leonoptis, there are only four in the universe, and each of them is under the jurisdiction of one of the four all-quarters maintainers of the universe. A hurried and anxious commotion began among all the beings on board. Oh. Keep the breath in it. Keep the breath. And in a short time, all the passengers and the crew assembled in the main hall situated in the center of the ship. Here you are. Each of them bore a branch of myrtle in one hand and a debd el cacho in the other. When the great cosmic ego Leonopti had come alongside the ship Karnak, certain parts of the latter were moved apart in a special way, and there passed from the ego Leonopti into the main hall of the ship, a procession composed of several archangels and a multitude of angels, cherubim, and seraphim. <gasps> and you never saw any of this before. The seraphim and they all too bore branches in their hands, but of palm. At the head of the procession walked a venerable archangel, and immediately after him, two cherubim followed solemnly, bearing a casket from which something also radiated, but this time something orange. In front of everyone in the main hall of the ship Karnak stood Beelzebub. And behind him were ranged his kinsmen and the captain of the ship and all the others stood behind them at a respectful distance. When the said procession of the ego Leonopti neared the beings of Beelzebub's nature who were assembled in expectation, they all halted and all of both forces, differently natured three brain beings, joined together in singing the hymn to, his, to our endlessness, which hymn is always sung on such occasions everywhere in the universe by beings of all natures and all forms of exterior coding. Thou long patient creator of all that breathes, Oh, unique vanquisher of the merciless hero past. Only rejoice and abide in beatitude. By the vanquishing of the hero past have we attained the possibility. And now only reset as merited. And always and in all things will extol thee forever. Thou the beginning of all ends. Thou having the end of all things within thyself, our endless creator. When 
when the hymn had been sung, the venerable archangel approached Beelzebub and solemnly proclaimed, By the degree of the all-quarters maintainer, the arch-cherub Pestfogner, and bearing his own sacred rod, we appear before you, your right reverence, in order to restore to you, in accord with the pardon granted you, from above and for certain of your merits, what you lost during your exile, your horns. Bring the rod. Having said this, the venerable archangel toward, turned toward the casket borne by the cherubim and with profound reverence carefully took it from it, the sacred rod. Meanwhile, all those present knelt down on one knee while the angels and the cherubim began to sing the appropriate sacred canticles. Taking the sacred rod in his hand, the archangel turned again toward Beelzebub and spoke thus to the beings of his nature. Beings created by our same unibeing endlessness, who has pardoned this once erring being Beelzebub, who by the infinite grace of our creator will again exist among you, beings like himself, as the variety and degree of reason of beings of your nature are defined and manifested by the horns on your head, we must, with the permission of our all-quarters maintainer, and with your help, restore the horns lost by Beelzebub. Beings created by our one common Father, your aid will consist in this, that each of you should consent to renounce for Beelzebub's merited pardon certain particles of your own horns. Whosoever therefore consents and wishes to do so, let him approach the sacred rod and touch its handle, and on the length of the time the handle of the sacred rod is held will depend the amount of active elements passing from your own horns for the formation of the corresponding horns of this pardon nature. Having said this, the venerable archangel holding the chief end of the sacred rod, that is to say the ball, over Beelzebub's head, turned the handle towards the assembled in such a way that whoever might wish might touch it. Or, as soon as the venerable archangel had finished speaking, a very great commotion began among the beings of Beelzebub's nature, each desiring to approach nearer and to be the first to touch the sacred rod with their hands as long as possible. Order, however, was finally established, and each in turn approached And each in turn approached and held the handle for as long as possible as was indicated by the captain of the ship who had taken upon himself the necessary direction. During the solemn sacred action, horns little by little began to grow upon the head of Beelzebub. At first, while just the bare horns were being formed, only a concentrated quiet gravely prevailed among those assembled. But from the moment that the forks began to grow upon the head of Beelzebub, But from the moments the forks began to grow upon the horns, tense interest and rapt attention began to be manifested among them. This latter state proceeded among them because everybody was agitated by the wish to learn how many forks would make their appearance on Beelzebub. Since by their number, the gradation of reason to which Beelzebub had attained according to the sacred measure of reason would be defined. First one fork formed then another, and then a third. And as each fork made its appearance, a clearly perceptible thrill of joy and unconcealed satisfaction proceeded among those present. Like, yeah, whoa, whoa, on your breath. As the fourth fork began to be formed, the tension among those assembled reached its height. 
since the formation of the fourth on the horn signified that the reason of Beelzebub had already been perfected to the sacred Ternunald. And hence, that there remained for Beelzebub only two gradations before attaining to the sacred Anklag. When the whole of this unusual ceremony neared its end, and before all those assembled had time to recover their self-possession from their earlier joyful agitation, there suddenly and unexpectedly appeared on the horns of Beelzebub, quite independently, a fifth fork of a special form. All fell prostrate before Beelzebub, because by the fifth fork, only the horns on, on his horns, it was indicated that he had attained the reason of the sacred podkulat, the last gradation before the reason of the sacred onklad. The reason of the sacred onklad is the highest to which, in general, any being can attain, being the third in degree from the absolute reason of his endlessness himself. But the reason of the sacred podkulad to which Beelzebub had already perfected himself is also very rare in the universe. Hence, even the venerable archangel prostrated himself before Beelzebub because his own degree of reason was as yet only that of the sacred Degendad, wanting three degrees to the reason of the sacred Anklad. When all had arisen to their feet, the venerable archangel When all had risen to their feet, the venerable archangel, addressing this time all assembled beings of various natures, proclaimed, <laughs> proclaimed to all of us, beings created by one creator, we have all just become worthy to be the first to behold the final formation of the appearance of that which is the dream, both of all those present and of all the beings in general of the whole of our megalocosmos. And now let us all together exult and rejoice over such worthiness, which is for us such a revivifying shock for our ability to struggle against our own denying force, which ability alone can lead us to that sacred podkulad attained by one of the sons of our common father, who although he first transgressed on account of his youth, yet afterwards was able by his conscious labors and intentional sufferings to become worthy with his essence to be one of the very rare sacred individuals of the whole of our great universe. After this proclamation of the archangel, all the beings without exception present in the spaceship Karnak then began to sing the prescribed sacred canticle I rejoice. And when this last sacred canticle also had been sung, all the angels and cherubim with the venerable archangel at their head returned to the cosmic Egolianopti, which then... He returned to the ship, which then left the ship Karnak and disappeared gradually into space whereupon the passengers and crew began to disperse to their places and the Karnak resumed its falling towards its destination. And lights fade to black. Take off.